Welcome into Hit That Line Week 5. I am your host, Zach Barry. Myself and the fellas are coming off quite the impressive week of picks. 10 and 2. It's good if you like perfect. Damn near perfect. Uh, we are back to pick week five games against the spread. Before I welcome in the fellas, I do want to remind you two new sponsors for the show here. If you are uh, a fan of making dinner time, lunch time, even breakfast easier, and you've got a busy schedule, you've got tons of stuff going on, and you don't feel like going to the store and uh, picking out ingredients and then cooking everything and doing all that, give HelloFresh a shot. Um, you can use code 50JD and get 50% off plus 15% off the next two orders. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50J and then use that same promo code 50J for your discount. Uh, I have actually used HelloFresh before. It is a, uh, it's pretty simple. Meal kit delivery. Um, it's, it's fantastic. It is, um, Everything from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's just time-saving, tons of options, and just the game-changing convenience of an app and being able to pick what you want each order. It's fantastic. 40, ep- uh, 40 recipes each week, crafted and curated by the chefs at HelloFresh. Can't beat it. If you're looking for something where everything is laid out, instructions, all the ingredients, I mean, maybe 30 minutes max. It's uh, it's good stuff. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50JD and use code 50JD for that 50% off plus 15 off the next two orders. Podcast also brought to you by the good folks at Roback. Go now to Roback.com, use promo code JD, and you get 20% off your first purchase. Performance polos, quarter zips, tees, hats. They've got tons of great stuff. It's some of the best fabric that I've ever worn in my entire life. Uh, The lightweight hoodie is the big thing now. I play a lot of golf. Weather's starting to turn a little bit. Hoodies are now acceptable on the golf course. So why would you wear a normal raggedy-ass hoodie when you can get high-performance active wear from Roback and rock one of their Q-zips or their uh, lightweight hoodies uh, that are just super comfortable. And uh, you you can, you can play golf in them. You can get some rotation. It's not too heavy. Feels great. Um, So go over to Roback.com, 20% off your first purchase with code J D Austin, Ben. Good evening. Nick is not with us. He is celebrating a trip around the sun. So we are going to give him an exemption, but with the caveat that if we lose this good juju we've had over the past two weeks, we're going to fist of fury coming down on his forehead, but good evening to you both. How are we doing? Man, I'm reeling after last week. I really had some high expectations for us and Alabama. It felt like they were going to try to give us the game in the first half and we just didn't take it. They tried. And so I'm going to double down on my take. I, I still think that, this is a down year for them and, and one that we should have capitalized on. Was that the most disappointing loss of the Kevin era for y'all? You know, I, I that, thought about that last, that year's, last year's egg bowl. Yeah. That's me. what I was going to say. I mean, that, that was a bad yeah, state sorry, team. Zach, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Same, same wavelength. Yeah. Bad state team um, at home, kind of a similar, uh, the flow was different, but a game where it was, it was, up in up in the air for most of that game, but I mean, state was so bad they were just like, please here, please please take the game from us, and Ole Miss yeah. just couldn't do it offensively. Yeah, Similar no, to last week, I agree with that. Um, man, we're in danger of doing something you just can't do at Ole Miss. Unfortunately, over the years we've tolerated losing, and we haven't had extremely high expectations. But what you can't do is be boring, and yep. we were boring as hell last week. That that was. That game was – it was hard to watch. I mean, that was some Big Ten shit. Putting up was, 10 <laughs> points against a, a, a vulnerable Alabama defense, you know, even when we were losing to Bama by two touchdowns, three touchdowns, whatever, over the years, it was at least interesting for for mm-hmm. much of the game. And Saturday was not. It was just a really disappointing effort. 
it, it was, was a good effort out of the defense, at least in it the was. first half, yeah, the first three quarters. And they really just got worn down. They did, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I can't part. even fault. Them. That's right. I can't even fault them for the um, the result. It the game was not. I mean, it did not feel like it was in doubt in the second half, but the scores still wasn't that bad. And Ole Miss dang near covered. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, probably should which have, is, yeah, yeah, should have Kiffin, won the game. Kiffin frankly, tried let's be to, honest. I think. Uh, not saying that Ole Miss is flat better than Alabama. We didn't say that last week. I, to my knowledge, we said that Ole Miss had the better quarterback. That is still true. Yeah, I still don't think Miller is any good. He hit two long passes. One of the the first deep ball was such a bad throw; it ended up being a good throw. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it it was so off target that the receiver is the only person who could come back to it. He did not intend to do that. And then the second one on the touchdown, um, you know, it's just a good play by a receiver that we frankly should not. I mean, I was there. That that didn't happen far from me, and that that ball should have never been completed. It, but should have, would have, could have. Almost got beat. We can move on, but it's just disappointing because Alabama really feels one dimensional, and and of that one dimension, it's not like they have an elite running back. Well, let me ask you all this: despite all the stuff that's happened this year, you wouldn't trade running backs with Alabama. You wouldn't trade quarterbacks with Alabama. No. You would probably trade no. some receivers with Alabama, but they don't have any elite ones. I mean, I guess but, but only because they're healthy. I mean, that's really the only reason. I that's trade. that's the only reason. You know, we would trade some defenders with Alabama because mm-hmm. everybody would. Um, but there's not really a lot of matchups where they're just clearly better than us. That was just a game to me where you know the way team and the SEC cons think. I hate to compare us to to this, but because that was it was such one sided. Like a couple of years ago, when A and M came to Oxford, and we we beat them by ten or twelve or fourteen, and and but the game was never really in doubt. It kind of mm-hmm. just felt like that. Other than the fact that the stats of this one weren't quite as lopsided as what we did to A and M, but Alabama is bad enough that they had it first and goal from the one, starting a drive, mm-hmm. and lost twenty five yards and had to kick a field goal. Yeah. I mean, great teams don't do that. No. And so so that's I think they're gonna lose games at SEC. And I think that there are that this is this is a year where you can lose to them and still have a chance at the end. Ole Miss does not need to lose sight of that because they're going to they're gonna get beat by some people. I truly believe now, unless everybody else is just terrible, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose games. Yeah, well, I, it was... I think you're right. I mean, I, I think I think there are more losses in Bama's future for certain. But as you said, it's just frustrating that we went in there. We we've lost to better Bama teams than that with worse Ole Miss teams, and still kept it close. You know, like a hundred percent. I I that didn't feel close in the second half. Like you said, I know the score was not a runaway. It wasn't a blowout by any stretch. But you know, they they tried to give us the game, and we just refused to take it from them. You know, our best player is our kicker. We had talked good about him. He misses a field goal going into mm-hmm. half. That's yeah. not – I'm not blaming the loss on him. But, you know, that – stuff like that, it, it just – it was just one of those games. I hate to yeah. use that phrase because it wasn't just on our players. though. like, we were in 10 jet sweeps or however many – I don't I mean, know how many we ran. It felt many, like that many. Too many, yeah. And, and so it's, it's like what – Maybe too, in the too whole many. Time, too like, many were run on third and long. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. At one point, we were like, "Okay, are we setting something up? Is are they trying to hit a big play?" And then on the on the deep ball, the guy intercepted. This is just my perspective. I think. I mean, it was a, it was a terrible de- decision by Dart. It's the worst decision he's made this year. Really, yeah. the only bad one he's made this year. Uh, I'm I'm a huge Dart fan, so there's nothing on him. And um, it can, two things about that. Number one, I think that he was frustrated at that point and that was a desperation type throw like let's let's we've not pushed the ball downfield all game You're trying to make something you know, happen yeah i'm yeah i'm gonna take a risk here so i don't necessarily blame that even though it's double coverage number two and more importantly is their the return on that because if that guy falls mm-hmm. bam has got it first and 10 from the five right and you've it's really a good punt but instead, he runs it back 37 yards, and Bama's got it first and 10 from the 40. Mm-hmm. And it's like that, you know, and I believe they ended up punching that one in. I, I think that may have resulted in the long touchdown pass. I can't remember. But um, anyway, I was there. It was a good in- environment. 
it wasn't overly loud. They frankly were not confident Dude, it did, before it did the not game. seem loud on television at all. Like, it No, did it wasn't. not seem loud at all. It felt like Vault Hemingway. That's yeah. not to disparage Vault Hemingway, but that's about the volume at the, you know. Mm-hmm. If we if you go to a game at Auburn at night or Tennessee at night, it is loud. Like it is loud, loud. This was not that. This was you could talk to the people next to you. And I think mm-hmm. part of it too was because it was so freaking hot. That was the hottest game of the year. I mean, it was yeah, it was really hot in Tuscaloosa at, at, at kickoff. And I think that affected people. They just didn't – it's unexpected to catch that kind of heat in the third or fourth week of September. Mm-hmm. I I might have said it in our, in our group text, but I was telling that to some people that were the normal, like, perpetually on the fence about Jackson Dart at all times, which I still don't understand because he's, he's throwing to a you – know, his two main targets, all due respect – a backup from Louisville and a walk on. Yeah, they're just not number one guys. I mean, that's that's just but a fact. I said that same thing where I was like, I think Dart was just like, I have to, I gotta get an explosive play. I gotta make something happen because the play calling was just so pedestrian. It was so boring. And I think he was he, he pressed for the first time all year and heaved it deep to try to make something happen. But I will say this on that return that you mentioned, Ben, you know who ran him down, right? Third boy Dayton Wade. Yeah, sorry. It was uh it was it was Akari Franklin. I it was Akari Franklin. So mm-hmm. how about that? Maybe a little little silver lining there that mm-hmm. you know he he was able to get full speed and run the guy down. So uh let's use that to segue into this week's game against LSU. Before we get into that, as always, want to remind you this show is brought to you by Homefield Apparel. If you haven't done so already, go check out the Olmus collection. When you do, use promo code TOC23. I'm actually rocking the uh, the throwback uh, almost basketball tee right now. Incredibly comfortable. Um, I, I can't I can't stress that enough. The t-shirts are fantastic. This isn't like your comfort colors that you get at Seaside, the big heavy fabric that you just sweat through when you walk outside. This is lightweight, comfortable, soft, and um, it, it's just it, you can't beat it. Um, go on there, check out the t-shirts, check out the bomber jacket, check out the quarter zip, all of that. And when you do promo code TOC23 for 15% off your first purchase, that's homefieldapparel.com. All right, guys, kind of back-to-back weeks here of like a marquee game for Ole Miss, not only on the field, but kind of in the betting circles. The handicappers are talking a lot. Last week it was, you know, can Ole Miss get it done for the first time? A lot of national people picked Ole Miss to get it done. We all did. Um, yeah, on like like y'all said, on paper, it looked like Ole Miss was set to finally get the monkey off Kiffin's back and beat Nick Saban. This week, it's it's a weird deal with the line. It, it moved a half a point after it opened, but ESPN analytics are predicting an Ole Miss win. I've seen a lot of people saying that you should actually flip the number and take Ole Miss outright. It's... It's kind of the same story, but just a different vehicle for this narrative. But it's not the same LSU team that we're used to seeing with the NFL dudes out wide on offense and the NFL dudes coming off the edge on both sides. Um, Because I do think Harold Perkins will play in the NFL. Um, But it's it's not the it's not your granddad's LSU. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Like I think Malik Neighbors is a very good receiver, and Mm -hmm. Brian Thomas is okay. If he gets behind you, he can make you pay. But, I mean, outside of neighbors, it's not, you know, there's no Jarvis Landry over there. There's no Odell Beckham. There's no Justin Jefferson. Um, Jaden Daniels is a good quarterback. Um, I think that LSU's offense is is, is eerily similar to Ole Miss where they kind of go as the quarterback goes. If they give Daniels time and he can create, they're going to make you make you look silly. But if you can confuse him, if you can get after him, and interrupt those passing lanes and get some pressure. Um, I think Ole Miss has a shot. Ben, you you mentioned your theory, and I'll let you uh, run with it here. But all of the national media and the the hit piece columns that are left, you know, Lane Kiffin's been catching strays all week about getting off Twitter. And although I agree, you had an interesting theory about that going into this game. Are you talking about me saying, you know, just the 
it, it sets up for an Ole Miss win, frankly. Like yeah. the, I, I mean, the issue is right is last week everybody it's it's the overreaction to to a loss at Alabama. I mean, Ole Miss is two and let's just say thirty five in Tuscaloosa. I don't know what it is, but but now everybody like you take into account that loss and is the line in this game still at two and a half? So LSU minus two and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just that's very telling to me, and and so it's one of those deals where you just the fans overreact. Everybody calls, you know, not for Kiffin's head. I don't think anybody said that, but you know, they want, um, you know, play calling to change and that sort of thing, and 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 maybe it does, and maybe it needs to. I I don't know. I, I but what I do know is. When everybody seems to be on one side, yet the line is still just to, like, oh, we're going to get killed. We're going to, you know, and the line is still just two and a half. That either Vegas knows of something that's going on in LSU's locker room that's not out yet or in their, in their, you know, in their program, or yeah. it's, it, or the teams are a lot more evenly matched than, than we think. I, I, I'll say this, and I did not consider, for the years we've been doing the show, I've always had the same uh and I'm gonna talk about the Alabama game right quick, not the one this year, but just in general. I've had the same theory about how you gotta beat Alabama because this is how we did it in fourteen and fifteen, along with a great friends. I mean, you gotta have a great team, but where you really re- Alabama challenges you one on one on the outside with the receivers. And if you're gonna beat them, you really need to have like a Laquan Treadwell or a few of those guys. Evan Ingram, that sort of deal. We won in 14 and 15 and 16. We still had Stringfellow and Van Jefferson and AJ and DK. They were freshmen, but point being is we played them close again that year. With LSU, it's not quite the same type of matchup that you have to exploit. The problem is with this LSU team, I don't know what that is because on the outside, they're not great at corner. It also said that earlier, and they're not for one of the first times ever. And this may be one of the first times that LSU is better on offense. Well, I say first time in 2019 they were, but LSU's typically known for having great defensive players. They're better on offense this year than they are on defense. And so, and I know it's a Brian Kelly thing, but I just find that interesting. And you know, Ole Miss is not terrible on the outside on defense. Matter of fact, Ole Miss is pretty good on defense. And so they held Alabama to six points in one half in Tuscaloosa in the first half. That's good. And still only held them to 24 despite playing 45 minutes of the 60-minute game. So to me, you know, I think that I think that this is just set up for, like I said, if everybody's on one side of the, of the aisle and the line still doesn't move, Vegas knows something that we don't. I mean – they're suckering people into taking LSU minus two and a half and they're not moving the line. That doesn't make sense to me. That tells me that the line stinks. That tells me that Ole Miss may win. And then you look at these predictors and it's saying that, and I'm not like some Ole Miss Homer. I'm just saying, that's just what the numbers are saying. I I agree with Austin. On the the other hand, I know what he's about to say that I'm sure he locks LSU in or, or there, you know, something along those lines, but you know, it, it's my, my, what I'm seeing on the field says it's an LSU win, but all the numbers in the in the paper says, you know, if, if they do win, it's very very close and and should be a pick them. Uh, I don't know. I, I I I think that Ole Miss has a chance to win here. It could be a little bit of a we need a coming out party for just Judkins. He ran a little bit better at Alabama, but it's time to like get him going. I mean, it, it's what are we now? Week five. Week six, the season's nearly halfway over. How crazy is that? So, yeah, uh, I, I mean that 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 kind of blows my mind. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to take Ole Miss plus two and a half. I'm not locking anything in there. Are you looking at cutting your health insurance premiums by as much as twenty to thirty percent? Are you aging into Medicare and need help finding a Medicare supplement plan? 
Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group at 601-953-8449. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, and he can help you with any of your health insurance needs. From regular health plans to life insurance to dental and vision and even Medicare, he has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601 601- 953-8449 and get your free quote today. Cooler temperatures are right around the corner, and as I like to say, it's the perfect time to play around a golf. And if you're looking for a premier golf course in Northwest Mississippi or the Memphis, Tennessee area, go to Cherokee Valley Golf Club in Olive Branch, 15 minutes from the Memphis International Airport. With those cooler temps, you might want to stay warm and comfortable on the course this fall. Go in the clubhouse and check out their new selection of outerwear from Travis Matthew and FootJoy, including FootJoy's new lightweight hoodie. This 18-hole par 72 course includes four sets of tees to accommodate all players and has 11 lakes, 52 bunkers, and the wide Zoysia fairways and extra-large champion Bermuda greens and clean roughs make for an excellent opportunity every single time to post a number. If you need a premier golf experience in the Mid-South, go to Cherokee Valley Golf Club. Call them at 662-893-4444 or check them out, olivebranchgolf.com. Yeah, I'm not going to lock anything in either, and I agree with the larger point, which is that the line is really fishy. I I think it's got to have been, has to have been influenced by uh, their game against Arkansas last week. And... I think Arkansas is in many ways a poor man's version of Ole Miss. They're really quarterback centric yeah. offense who, you know, are, are kind of lacking at the skill positions. They are yeah. running back. Rocket no Sanders Rocket was, Sanders. Exactly. And, and for most of this year, we've not had Quinchon, not, not due to injury, but just because we haven't been able to get him going. Um, we've been missing weapons at tight end, um, at wide receiver. And so I think the market saw what Arkansas was able to do, which, by the way, they didn't just hang for the first half. The more impressive thing they did was Arkansas got down, I think, by eight or ten in the second half and roared back into it and tied the game late. That's really difficult to do in LSU, in in Baton Baton Rouge, Rouge, in a night game without your full complement of weapons. So I think the market looks at that and says, well, I mean, hell, can Ole Miss do what Arkansas did? And in in many respects, yeah, I think we can. I think we can duplicate that. And then you you know you add in the fact that LSU will be on the road and not in the friendly confines of of Tiger Stadium. So I think we've got a shot. I'm not burying us. I just need to see signs of life from our offense. At, at this point, are y'all y'all agree with this? I'm more confident in our defense and what they're going to be able to do 100%. Saturday than, than I am mm-hmm. our offense. Who would have yeah, ever 100%. guessed that when we hired Lane Kiffin? Like. Well, I'll tell you this. If you told me preseason that we would have held Alabama to around 350, 360 yards, total yards in the game, I would have said, we're winning that game. Yeah. I mean, because you would expect us to have 450 or 500, even against them. Yeah, yeah. I think our defense is playing with more confidence. I think the coaching staff on that side of the ball has a plan. They execute their plan, and where their plan fails – they make adjustments and they make adjustments quickly to respond to um, whatever they need to yep. address, you know, in game. And the same cannot be said right now for the offensive staff. I don't know uh, to what do I attribute that. I have no idea. But they need to figure it out and figure it out quickly. Um, LSU is weird, man. Ben, as you said, they 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 don't have NFL corners for the first time in like 50 years. Uh, their linebackers don't scare you much. I know Perkins is a monster, but – He's really only effective in the pass game. You can run directly at Perkins and have success. Um, their offensive line, though they returned a lot of snaps there, um, and young guys who who performed really, really well last year, they've not just been dominant. They don't have a running back that scares you. Daniels sort of reminds me of a streaky shooter in basketball where he will have four or five plays and he just looks like an NFL quarterback, and then he'll have seven where you're like, what the hell was he what was he looking at? What was that? Why did he make that throw? Why why did he make that decision? So, you know, obviously they run a – they their two-man game is pretty good. Neighbors and Daniels is among the best in the conference, if not the best in the conference. 
But I think if you can contain him, you're not going to shut him down. But if you don't allow him to do what he did against State, I think our defense has a shot to hold their offense under 30 or, say, let's say low 30s. We just need our offense to keep pace. We need them to show up. They showed up late against Tulane. They showed up late against Georgia Tech. I'm afraid if they wait to show up late in this one, the game's going to be over. We need to, to 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 get out of the gate quickly, start hot, put some points on the board, give our defense some confidence, let Pete scheme it up on that side of the ball and not constrain what he's able to do because we're chasing points. Um, let him play aggressive. I, again, line is fishy as hell. I'm not locking up anything, but um, – I'm rooting for a Rebel win. I just don't know that I see it. It's right. interesting. I mean, <laughs> it running right at Perkins, it, and it's weird because LSU's best player is on defense, but I really think the better unit is their offensive unit. And 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 before you get going, Zach, I was thinking about this. I don't want us to give too much credit for what they did to, in, to Mississippi State. That was number one, yeah. State – was it's early in the year they're going through a coaching change mm-hmm. and that was pretty much a flawless game from LSU like that's not going I mean sure I guess they could come to Oxford and win by 35 points but but think about like 2016 Ole Miss goes five and seven but beats Georgia 45 to nothing I mean yeah w- weird games happen is my mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. go ahead Zach sorry uh, so obviously over the weekend, it was, it was frustrating just as just casually watching the game, watching the game as someone who covers Ole Miss, it, it just a lot of question marks. I, I, I really wish I could have been in the press conference to ask, ask questions because yeah, just the, it was the weirdest I've seen an Ole Miss offense look under Lane Kiffin, just like the complete lack of creativity uh, they hardly took any shots downfield, and I, I know you're probably going to say, well, Dart didn't have time, or, you know, well, they don't have anybody to throw to. Well, they found ways to throw the ball downfield to Jacor Pearson in 2021. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, they found ways last year to get it done at times. Um, and, and I just couldn't fathom for the life of me doing jet sweeps and pop passes and just – running sideways against Alabama over and over and over. And I know they don't have the, the NFL cachet over there. They don't have the big time names and the, the first team, all Americans, but they can still run. Like they're not, yeah. they're not as good as they normally are, but they're not super slow. Um, That was frustrating, but looking ahead to this week, <laughs> this one to me guys just it is like that game that just makes no sense. And when it's over, everybody's just going to kind of laugh and just say, well, you know, we'll take it. Um, I don't know if it's just, you know, bouncing back from Bama and, you know, Kiffin kind of getting his nose rubbed in it after all the shit talk on Twitter and, and all the cute meme stuff. But I feel like this one sets up for Ole Miss to win a big one here because the home t- in the last 10 games here, the home team is eight and two straight up. And nine and one against the spread. Um, y'all both alluded to it. Vegas is begging people to take LSU. Uh, for some reason, I feel like a night game in Oxford, and this isn't some like, oh, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, hell on wheels in there. Like, you know, Vaught Hemingway is not the loudest, the most rowdiest crowd, but when it's full and it's a rivalry game like this, it can get loud. And I think because it's a night game, like if this was an 11 o'clock or even a three o'clock kick, I I kind of would probably just say lay the points and I don't think it's close because I think the crowd would be sleepy. They'd be lazy. They'd get there late. They'd miss kickoff. They won't be as loud. This is a game where you're going to have all day in the Grove, all day in the circle, all day on the square to convince yourself that Ole Miss can bounce back and get this win. And people are going to be fired up. And it's LSU, so people are going to be excited. I don't know. I feel like Jackson Dart responds in a big way. And I, I don't know if Quinshawn Judkins has a big day, but I, I, as Ben said, I think he ran better in Tuscaloosa. Um, Kiffin's alluded to that he hasn't been 100% yet. I don't know whatever he banged up in that two-lane game. 
um, has been lingering, but um, I, I just feel like this is a game where Kiffin's going to kind of circle the wagons and figure it out. Um, it's another week with Caden Priestcorn, and Zachary Franklin and Trey Harris getting healthy. Um, you have to hope that Jalen Knox is ready to go. I, I don't know what the holdup is there. It, it might be time to, to shelve that, but um, and then, yeah, I'm also kind of interested to, you know, are, are they ever going to do anything with Spencer Sanders? And I, you know, I'm obviously I'm not saying bench dart, but, you know, do something to put a wrinkle in there. You know, this is an Ole Miss podcast and, you know, maybe I'll commit treason here, but I'll say this Mississippi state's offense is kind of a wreck, but they figure out a way to include, uh, Oh my God! What's his name? Mike Wright. Andy. Mike Wright. They mm. bring him in the red zone. They'll they'll bring him in a couple times and let him run around. Um, I do that, or uh, it, it, I mean, otherwise you're just wasting money from the Grove Collective, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I, I know he's an insurance policy for you know the the worst case scenario that Dart gets hurt because Walker Howard's you know a youngster and he hasn't played a lot, and you know Spencer Sanders played a lot of football. But you got to do something, especially like like last week when just nothing was working. You were you, you were really bogged down. You weren't moving the football after that that first quarter. I, I mean, I, just try something different at this point. But um, I, I threw those stats to y'all earlier this week. Uh, pressure and stop rate. LSU is the bottom of the SEC in both of those. They're in the hundreds in stop rate, which I would have never guessed because they've got some decent dudes up front and they have Harold Perkins and they're going to have decent athletes everywhere else because it's LSU and they recruit well. But they are not very good at pressure and just flat-out stop rate on defense. So I feel like Kiffin's going to really, really push the envelope there and try to stress them, and he's going to try to do it in different ways. Um if he doesn't, it, it's it's time to start asking hard questions in the post game. But um, yeah, I, I I guess I'm gonna go back to the well one more time. I'm gonna give Kiffin another chance. At the end of the day, last week was on the road against Alabama, a place where Ole Miss has won twice in its entire existence. So um, losing by 14 last week. That's also not unique to Ole Miss. Like nobody wins there, mm-hmm. right? So <laughs> yeah, let, especially against Saban. Like- it's not like like Ole Miss went to Arkansas like last year. That's a more inexcusable mm-hmm. loss than yeah. last week. Yeah. So it's I mean, it, Ohio State could play Alabama in the in the playoff this year and lose twenty four to ten. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, let's have some perspective. Yeah. So it, it sucked because I, the entire fan base all week was just itching to get going in that game because they everybody thought that Ole Miss had a shot and Hey, we can, we can get it done this year and they don't. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a hard fall from all of that optimism and, and the anxious energy and, and falling back down to earth, but you're back at home night game LSU. I'm going to, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm not locking it in, but I think Ole Miss can get it done. I, both of y'all so, said it. This isn't this isn't some vaunted LSU team. Um, I think with the crowd, and I think Kiffin maybe humbled last week. I think he's going to have some tricks up his sleeve. So Ole Miss went six and four against LSU in the nineties. All right, since two thousand, including the two thousand season, and that includes winning games in 97, 98, 99. Austin was probably in college back then, but. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> and, but from two thousand, uh, John Avery and Deuce McAllister owned LSU and Joe Gunn, by the way. Yeah, and I think yeah. that was the Denardo years, and maybe at the very beginning of Saban. Mm-hmm. But but from two thousand until now, L- now the overall series is LSU sixty five, Ole Miss forty one. It hadn't been that that big of a gap though, ex- except since two thousand. Saban kind of changed everything in the rivalry. Because since then, LSU is 17 and six in the last 23 games. Hmm. All right. That includes Ole Miss having won three times since 2013 in the last 10 years, which, which game, that game was vacated. 
And then from yeah. 2000, 2000 to 2010, Ole Miss won three times, including the two Houston Nut years, the Jevin Sneed games. And um, 2001, when Eli hit Doug Ziegler, Ole Miss won like 35, 21 or 24 or something. The games then were were sort of close. But, but the last five or six years, now, mind you, we had probation, so it's a little bit different. And they had Joe Burrow. But, like, 2016, LSU wins by 17. 2017, LSU wins by 16. 2018, LSU wins by 29. 2019, LSU wins by 21. That's their best team ever. Then 2020, they won by five. That was, I think, the that was the COVID year. Ole Miss wins in 21 by 14. And LSU won last year by 25. The, what I'm getting at is the games have really not been that close the last – outside of just a small handful, 2014, you know, when they stormed the field, I think they won 10 to 7. 2013, when Ritter kicked the last second field goal, we vacated, it was 27-24. Um, 2011, 52 to 3. That's when they yeah. needed on like the three-yard line. Yeah. So so I, I say I would say, you know, th- there's still – it's still like a, a very good program, but it's time for – you know, I think I think that I'm picking up on Kiffin's. Con- I mean, this is his fourth year now, and I know every off season everybody is concerned. I don't think they're going to be as concerned this year as to whether or not he's leaving because there's nothing you can do now. Because, but at this point, if you got a coach that's making nine or ten million, it's time to even the series back out a little bit. I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that Ole Miss is as good of a program as LSU, but you can hold serve at home and, or 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 come really close to it. Yeah, and so so it's time to. I mean, we recruit a lot of the same players. Now they may win two out of every three, or one out of every one and a, however you want to say that, three out of every five. But but we it's time to do it. I mean, there's no no reason that there. This is not a. This program is not Alabama. Like they have great players, they are not Alabama. They do have a better quarterback than Alabama this year, though. So it should be interesting. I just wanted to go through there and say, look, since 2000, we're just six and 17 against them. But we have also to keep in mind, you had, think about who played quarterback for us during that time. Ethan Flat, Michael Spurlock, Robert Lane, um, <laughs> uh, Zach Stout, Jeremiah Masoli, who was a good player. But I think we look back on him better than he actually was. Um, not saying he's bad, but, you know, but the years we have good quarterbacks, we, we get one from them. Eli Manning. Jevin Sneed, Matt Corral, we have Jackson Dart. Keep keep and in so mind. One would think, you know, go ahead. I was going to say, what was it, 2010? Jeremiah Masoli damn near beat them in Death yeah. Valley by yeah. himself. He did. He, he did. Would, the, would have beaten him if it wasn't for college football's yeah. stupid ass rule about jumping into yeah. the end zone. Correct. Was that Marquise? Marquise Summers, yeah. Which is yeah. so uh, stupid. Like, why do you yeah, throw a flag yeah. on that? But I, know, I mean, yeah, Masoli M- and make all the jokes you want about Hootie Dale. He called a hell of a game that day. The play calling was just it, it was like, kind of like his last stand, you know, that was like, yeah, it. I mean, less miles in that that defense was loaded and they had no answer for everything they did that day. But not yeah, that's, always gave LSU problems too. like he always coached his ass off in that game. other than that 52 three game. You're exactly <laughs> yeah. right. Like he, yeah. he beat him in 08, beat him in 09. Yeah. That 2010 game. And then, then obviously 11. Well, but I mean, by, even in Arkansas too, like at Arkansas. Yeah. He was, yeah. He was oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Corinth High um, would have beat Ole Miss in, in 2011. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is a good point there. Cause you know, I mentioned the statistics, you know, the home team dominates in the last decade. And quarterback play is crucial. I mean, I think maybe the one outlier was what twenty fourteen when Bo Wallace threw the pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, on the, just a really bad throw, and Ole Miss was the better team that night. It was just a defensive slugfest, but. Yeah, I mean, the better quarterback is typically going to win on any given night, but especially in this series, like Ben said, if you can win under center and you're at home, um, or I should say, if if you're good under center and you're at home, you can win. So yeah, I mean, it's it's not far fetched or insane or or you know, this is some, you know, 
homer circle jerk here. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Ole Miss gets a win on Saturday. Because yeah, look, I mean, we we'd be remiss to point out too, or if we didn't point out that uh, you know Jaden Daniels he killed us last year by scrambling. He kills everybody by scrambling, and even if he's not, yeah. you know, truly rushing, he's mobile in the pocket and buys time. Uh, Perkins last week did a hell of a job spying Milrow, so yeah. he may be the equalizer this week. We Tennyson didn't have to. Tennyson too, yeah, he did a he did a great job. So maybe you know that's what we were missing last year. Somebody that can actually effectively spy Daniels, bottle him up, and keep him from buying time until neighbors gets open. Um, I don't want to put I don't want to put the, the game on the the freshman's shoulders, but he looked so good last week, man. Big things to come for that dude. He's he's going to be a star for us. Yeah, man, it's um future SEC defensive player of the year. Yep, type good. Oh, I mean, he he was he's lived up to the billing and and he hasn't even played like it's it'd be one thing if he was like, you know, hell is you played Harold Perkins damn near every snap last year. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think Perkins is just now finally getting in. Oh, they're going to play him every snap going and, forward. I mean, that... he he knows that, you know, he knows all the call because I think that's what it was, was like there were certain packages and certain calls that he wasn't super comfortable with. And I don't think. Pete Golding wanted to throw him out there. Yeah. Too early. I trust Pete Golding, but that is such a ridiculous. Yeah, thing. I, I yeah. get it. But it's like I, I text y'all in the group text. Like he's a freshman. He's going to make mistakes, but he makes mistakes going 900 miles an hour, man. And that's what you want. Like yeah. he looks yeah. like he's shot out of a cannon when he, he closes does. on the ball. Nobody on the Ole Miss defense closes like that. And frankly, nobody on Alabama's defense closes like that. No, no, no. He He's like other than Harold Perkins. Yeah. is one of very few players in college football who can do that. Yeah, I mean, he covers uh, 15 yards in two and a half steps, and he he's there. He's an NFL player. Yeah. Like, he's an NFL player. You know, you, you just look at guys are like, dang, that guy's built different. I, You can say this is high praise or this is crazy or, you know, well, please don't hang up because we haven't done locks yet. But I haven't – that first sack of Milro last week, I haven't seen a dude close like that since number 49. It was very reminiscent, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just – I mean, he literally – like, he held R2 and yeah. hit – and, you know, hit the joystick for the hit stick. I mean, it was – that was a special – Ole Miss fans don't see that a lot defensively. Um, Yeah, and I don't know. what I would say Milrow's a better runner than Daniels. Is that – I think they're different. Straight lines they're different, right? Yeah. Daniels does not take a hard lick. He's no, slippery. He's, slippery. Like, I, exactly. he's, 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 slippery. he's like uh, Bryce Young was last year. That's right. You cannot square him up. It's like Johnny football. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah, comp, actually. Yeah. They're going to have to square him up. You're going to have to hit him under the chin a couple times to where he's going to start looking for a place to fall down instead of just running around. Um, having said that, having said that, he, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't let you square him up. He does stupid shit, though, like jumping <laughs> after, out of tackles. And somehow <laughs> so you. You still just can't, you know, you can't, you, you can't land the punch like you could, you know, against ninety nine percent of quarterbacks. If I'm if I'm Pete Golding and I'm not, and he knows a lot more football than you know I do, but I'm just running the same type of deal with uh, Perkins this week, and I just be like, look, you don't really even need to know the call. Just just line up on either side of the ball, line up on the wide side of the field you know, the strong, the field side and just, just run, just follow yeah. uh, Daniels. Yeah. Just like chase contain, after him. Yeah. If he breaks just, contain, he's yours. Yeah. 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 yeah just, and and yeah. if he stands back there after two and a half seconds, take off, like just try to get him delayed blitz and, and see if you do it. Cause that's what he did with Milrow. Like he would wait mm -hmm. and wait and wait. And when it was clear that Milrow was not going to, and by the time Milrow tried to take a step, Perkins is so damn fast. He couldn't get going, and and he's like, he's getting hit in the mouth. I mean, he's a very impressive <laughs> defender, frankly. Yeah. It, it, he's going to be have a. Oh, I hate to, that I have to say this. He's going to have a high price price tag after the season's over. Yeah, he'll be worth it. Penny though, we got to. Yeah, he will. he will. They're keeping. I'll go ahead. But, I'll say this: as long as Pete Golding's in Oxford, he will be in Oxford. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about our defensive recruiting. And I don't think Pete Golding is going anywhere. His wife's from here. So, yeah. like, I think he's the next head coach whenever Kiffin leaves. I've never been more relaxed about Ole Miss, the future of Ole Miss coaches in a long time. Because it's just going to – if Kiffin leaves, 
Goldie's going to take the job. That that's one man's opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't think that's crazy. No, yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's get into locks. We'll go ahead and knock out Nick's right here since he is not in attendance. Um, and make sure I have this correct. He is wanting Indiana. Plus cover, 14 and a half. Yeah. Cover the 14 and a half. And then Michigan, yeah. Nebraska under 39 and a half. Um, all right. So next three locks are going to be the Hoosiers plus 14 and a half. Fresno State minus 24 and a half. And then Michigan, Nebraska under 39 and a half. Which is interesting. That's a dice roll there. Because Michigan could very well get that on their own. I know. That's what I would worry about with Harbaugh back. And uh, you got to think he wants to prove a point against Nebraska uh, with rule and and potentially Mm -hmm. being an up and coming program and having to recruit against those guys. This is one where it feels like Jim could just go off and 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 win forty five to three or something. Yeah. All right. Since we are operating a man down, we are we will still stick with the alphabetical order round robin here. But Austin, kick us off. All right, y'all. I told you offline that I hate the card this week, and we are due for massive regression. So I'm just laying the groundwork there for my zero and three performance this week. Um. Let me start in Austin, Texas. Uh, Kansas plays Texas. Kansas uh, coming off of uh, a decent performance against BYU, but the week before, kind of looking lackluster against Nevada. So a um, little concerned uh, about their offense, but they are extremely well coached, and I'm not concerned about Texas's offense. So I want to take over 60 and a half. I think I can trust the Jayhawks to get 28. Uh, Texas doesn't have to do much from there on a 16-point number, 16-point line. Uh, we're saying Texas gets, what, 42, 38, 38, 28. That gets me over, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's go over. 16 and a half, Kansas and Texas. All right. I thought you were about to lean the Jayhawks way there for a second. I, at 16, I kind of lean Texas. I'd like a 17 or 17 and a half to play the Jayhawks, but I feel like, you know, the Texas is back joke. They, I mean, the jokes write themselves at this point, but they may actually finally be back. They seem to be on a mission this year. And I think offensively, they just have more dudes than Kansas does. I think Kansas has a better mm-hmm. head coach, but I think Texas just has too many skill guys and weapons. And if they're dialed in, I don't know how Kansas can keep them under 35 or 38. And so at that point, you're asking, you know, you're asking a lot of the Kansas offense against the Texas defense, which, look, they, they controlled the trenches against Alabama. And I don't think Kansas' offensive line is as good as Bama's. So I worry there with Kansas that they could get swamped. Things could go downhill early. And then if they have to go one-dimensional, Texas's athletes could just take over. So that would concern me about taking the Jayhawks. I feel much better about over 60 because you know even if the score is out of hand say it's 42 14 or whatever late i do think kansas is going to keep trying to score so i think it would push it over the total there in garbage time hopefully we don't need that but but i think that's how it would play out some people are saying that kansas is the better quarterback i don't know about that old 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 jalen daniels not to be confused with Jaden. jalen daniels can can spin it I just I'm don't know little, if he has enough help. I'm a little biased because I'm holding a Quinn Ewers Heisman future <laughs> ticket. So, oh, uh, okay. I'm still, uh, I'm still pounding my chest after the uh, preseason shows where I said Michael Penix was my guy. Because man, my that's God, great. <laughs> he Did looks you take good it? right now. No, I didn't. But you should have. That'll be man, uh, definitely the favorite. Yeah, he's God. They're they're so fun to watch. Ole Miss football is happening. The Chris Beard era right around the corner. A retooled Ole Miss baseball not long removed from his 2022 national championship, the first ever for the program, is ready for a rebound in 2024. 
Have you gotten your tickets? There are plenty available for all sports. Single game tickets for football available now, as are season tickets for basketball. And baseball season tickets go on sale starting in October. And you can also get tickets right now for the throwback game in the Tad Pad. They're still available, including VIP packages. But they're going fast, and you don't want to miss out. Don't miss any of your Rebels in action this season. Visit www.olmistix.com. That's www.olmistix.com. Or you can give them a call at 662-915-7159. That's 662-915-7159 for the Ole Miss Athletic Foundation, a proud sponsor of the flagship and the Talk of Champions Podcast Network. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Introducing the new and improved BNA Bank mobile app. From setting transaction alerts and tracking your spending habits to managing travel plans and turning off a lost or stolen debit card, you can take care of all of it in the new BNA mobile app. At BNA Bank, we know that life moves pretty fast, and we have the mobile technology to keep up with your life on the go. BNA Bank, local, invested, modern banking. All right, Ben, what you got? So what can we get uh, in Utah to Oregon State? God damn it. <laughs> Three and a half. Is that the is that the biggest we can get? You can get I, four. I, I think I'm going to take or, uh, Oregon State plus four here. Um, so – Utah no, minus. Wait, Oregon State's favored? Yeah, yeah. Four and oh, a half. Never mind. Mm, mm. Uh, Zach, if you've got one, go. I was thinking it was the other way around. You're not taking it? No, no, I'm not going to take No. If you want to play Oregon State minus or three and a half, go be my guest. Okay, because I had a whole, I had a whole preamble to this pick. I had it <laughs> prepped and ready to go. Roll, roll um, with it, roll with it. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna talk beavers here, and no, we're not going to the plains. We're gonna be in Corvallis, <laughs> and I'm taking the beavers because no cam rising. Utah has skirted by week in week out, and now they're winning, but it's winning ugly, and they benefited from playing at Rice Eccles. And by God, you cannot win there. I mean, UCLA, deer in the headlights. I know they have a true freshman quarterback, but man, they just put the paws on you there and you just can't do anything. Now you go over to Corvallis, and I believe it is still Reeser Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. And it's kind of similar to that for the Beavers there. We saw... Last year was a house of horrors for Caleb Williams and SC. They lose in overtime. Um, they don't lose there a lot. That stadium has been under renovation for the last couple of seasons, I believe. It is now completed, so it'll be a packed house for this one. They play extremely well there. Jonathan Smith has a good plan. I look for them to bounce back after last week's instant classic against Wazoo. That was a hell of a game. They came back and and – gave wazoo a scare um I, I i just i like the beavers here i think utah's luck is finally going to run out because cam rising is i believe he is still a scratch and even if he does play the thing that makes cam rising so good is he's mobile and he can move around and create and i don't think he's going to be able to do that even if he if he plays there's no no way he's 100 percent on that knee um so I like the Beavers to to win a fun one there at night in Reeser. So yeah, I'm taking Oregon State minus three and a half. And, and if he plays, he's not going to play receiver and tight end and running back for Utah either. They don't have any <laughs> skill guys, man. They like they are they're they're actually well, it's, pretty bad at the skill positions. What's his name? Uh, Keithy. Yeah. Yeah, he's still out, right? 
I think so. And see that that's so last week Wazoo was able to exploit Oregon State's secondary with Cam Ward and an up tempo offense that spread you out. Uh, Utah can't do that. You were talking if, about fun to watch. Yeah, they're awesome. Even if Rising is healthy, Utah is not going to be able to duplicate that attack, that that approach against Oregon State here. So um, I'm with you too, Zach. Away from home, Utah's been very, very pedestrian. I mean, Baylor's cheeks this year and Utah had to mount a miraculous fourth quarter comeback oh, there to beat them God. on the road. Um freaking so, killed me with that hook. That one. Yeah. Yeah. I like Oregon State here too. Jonathan Smith's a great coach. Dude, the Pac 12's yeah. got some like and killer quarterbacks and great yeah. coaches. And dude, everybody was it seemed like over the the offseason everyone was like trying to speak it into existence because everybody felt bad for him at Clemson, but fresh start for DJU, I mean he looks mm-hmm. good. And maybe it's because he's got a better coach. And I, I think no, it's, it's absolutely part of it. He has a better offensive no, I, system too. <laughs> I, I did not hesitate when I said that because look yeah. at Clemson right now. They are reeling. But, yeah, I he looks a completely different person out there. He's just a better fit in this offense. They don't ask him mm-hmm. to do things that he can't do. You know, and he, It's he's, probably he's, a better offense for him as a pro prospect. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, Oregon State likes to slow it down and play a little ball control, and they ask him to play action and hit the third and eighth throw, you know, every now and then rather than taking shots downfield and putting the the entire game on his shoulders. They they let their run game um, take control of the game. I, I think they can here too. Utah's got a really good defense, but Oregon State's offensive line might be the best in the country. Like, again, n- nobody it's knows either them or Oregon. You, yeah, that's true, which is that's going to be a hell of a game later in the season. But Ooh. Um, I think Oregon State can big boy Utah at the point of attack. If anybody can do it, Oregon State can do it. Um, good pick, Zach. You know, I should have done it. Should have gone with it. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm I'm gonna go back to Iowa. All right. They they came through with me before. They host Michigan State this week, mm-hmm. and we're gonna talk through this because I want y'all to help me with this pick. Um, I'm re- I was only one with the losing record last week. I still think that I'm like positive overall for the year. Austin's like hot yep. as a firecracker, but um, so me, so you, Nick, and I are seven and five, and Austin is thirteen and three. I, I mean, are you kidding me? So, um, <laughs> Michigan State plays at Iowa. Iowa is a twelve and a half point favorite. That's enticing, um, but. But more enticing to me is the total, which is 36 and a half. And um, Iowa can't score 36 and a half by themselves. And Michigan State couldn't score. They can't score even score 25. Yeah. I was about to say, they couldn't score. Michigan State and Iowa could play 14 quarters <laughs> and not score 36 and a half. So I'm going to have to. I want to take the under, and I also I'm considering taking under eleven and a half for Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Now, mm. Michigan State is so they've played, um, you know, their last two or their two main opponents this year have been Maryland and Washington. Against Maryland, they scored seven, and against Washington, they scored nine. Those teams don't have as good of a defense as Iowa. Not only that, it's in Iowa. And so, I mean, and, and I think they may be without a. Uh, a anyway, I they've got <laughs> they they're 111th in rushing offense, um, they're 111th in turnover margin, and they they get they convert on third downs 41 percent of the time. I mean, this is a pathetic offense. I'm going to go under 36 and a half. I wish I could put it for all three locks, like parlay it, do whatever. I just don't think that the. I mean. This just doesn't have – it. it's – you know, what's crazy is, is they're like, well, 28-7 gets really close. Man, if Iowa scores 28 points, have they scored that in a game this, yet this year? I doubt it. So I don't think they've scored um, 25 yet, which is like his deal, right? Yeah, that's his deal. So, we're going to go 25. under 36 and a half, and I may circle back later in the in the show and go under 11 and a half uh, for Michigan State's Ooh, total we'll, themselves. We'll double dip. A little double dip in the same game, pulling Austin. I like all of that. And I'll say another thing to keep in mind here with Michigan State going forward. 
they 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 have to be on quit watch because they just lost Mel Tucker, and yep. some of those dudes have to be thinking about the portal, right? I mean, they oh yeah, they're already be. shopping themselves around. Exactly. You got, a, you got a thirty day window right now. Yeah, they have a thirty day window, so the clock is ticking. Are you going to go out there and bust your ass against no. Iowa? Against Iowa, and to try no. to win the Can game? You, no. Ima- you you know, like it's kind of like when Ole Miss or whoever used to play. Uh, back in the day, like Belama, Arkansas, or yeah. whatever, and it's just like pain the whole yep. game. It, that that's that's Iowa. It's like yeah. playing an option yeah. team, except they don't run the option. And your it's, coach like, just left, and you're already entertaining offers from you know everybody yeah. else in the Big Ten. Yeah, dude, I I think they're on quit watch the rest of the season. Well, and and two, like I know some people are like, well, they're bringing Mark D'Antonio back to hold things together, like dude. Probably half, maybe Those more than half of that, that entire is. Yeah, they don't know who Mark Dantonio is. They have no is. idea who that guy is. Nor do they care. No. So yeah. Um oh yeah, that that that's the part of that game where it's like, how motivated are they, if at all? Um Yeah, they're not at all. Now, that doesn't mean that Iowa can score, but uh, I just I think you see a completely you know a lackadaisical effort mm-hmm. from Michigan State, and if Iowa even plays like a, their A minus game, that's them scoring twenty five points. So yeah I, yeah, I like the under. All right, we are going back to Beavers, and this time we are going to the Plains because I think this is if you can have <laughs> if you can have a circle the wagons game. As the number one team in the country and undefeated, this, this is, is it. it. This is it for Georgia, yeah. where they have played with their food all season long. They have gone yeah. through the motions. It has been so boring and milk toast. This is when Kirby Smart turns on that national championship halftime speech type hype. Like I feel like they are gonna put it on Auburn. It's a rivalry game. Um I get them all mixed up. It's the South's South's oldest rivalry. rivalry. I always Mm -hmm. want to say clean old fashioned hate. That's Georgia tech, Um, which, which might be a decent game this year. Um, But yeah, I Auburn is not good. They don't have a quarterback at all. They're still trying to figure out. I mean, freeze is already doing the, which I'm shocked he's doing this. He's already taking ownership and saying that they failed Peyton Thorne. And like it, who who's going to play quarterback? Because it's not like it's like, all right, we'll put Ashford out there and let him run around. Like that shit ain't gonna work against Georgia. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still don't think Carson Beck is that good. But I think this is a game where Kirby Smart and that staff motivate everybody and they just play with their hair on fire. And I think I, I mean, I mean, it, it's only 14. Yeah. I don't care about on the road because look, the 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 rule this year has been fade Georgia at home and tail them on the road. So Bulldogs yeah. lay them big time. I agree. That's... Go ahead. Go ahead. Also. I was just going to say Kirby's always looking for motivational angles, even if he has to just completely make shit up. Yeah. But here's one. The last time Kirby smart faced Hugh freeze. So it was mm-hmm. 45 to 14 Ole Miss. He got in wrecked, and it wasn't that close. It wasn't it even that was close. It was not that close. Y'all, you know he remembers that game. You know he mm-hmm. does. He's got this one circled, and now he's recruiting against you at Auburn. Auburn likes to go into Atlanta. They like to go into Georgia to get kids. Kirby's going to want to run this one up. And I would just also say the last 10 times Auburn has played Georgia, they've only scored more than 14 points one time. And those were, like, good Auburn offenses, like legit Auburn offense. This is not one of those Auburn offenses. I don't know how Auburn scores at all here. So can Georgia put up 15? If so, I think they cover. Yeah, I, so looking at it here, so far this season, Auburn, in games that actually somebody had a pulse, I'm not counting UMass or Sanford, they scored 14 against Cal, and they scored 10 against a and and they deserve to lose the Cal game. I watched way too much oh, of that game. Oh, my God. Uh, but I, Cal I, was I, the, the better team for much of that game. What would they leave out there? What, 20? 
their at kicker least, missed at least three field goals. Their yeah, I was going to say they they had a touchdown taken off the board on a reversal on a fumble, and then yeah, so at least sixteen points were left off the board. Mm-hmm. Have y'all um, have y'all seen that stat? Maybe y'all talked about this. No, I didn't hear it or wasn't listening. But the Auburn's last five Power Five games, what they've passed for? Oh yeah, they, they haven't. What is it? They haven't. They have touched over hundred. Yeah, in the in five straight power five games, they've not thrown for hundred yards. Jeez. Like November six, Mississippi State, seventy five yards. November twelfth, A M sixty. November twenty sixth, Alabama seventy seven. September ninth this year, Cal ninety four. September twenty third, A M fifty six yards against passing against A M. This year in power five games, they're averaging seventy five passing yards a game and a hundred and forty rushing yards a game. Two hundred and ten and two hundred and fifteen yards per game. That includes playing a game at Cal. Like, yeah, okay. they're playing Georgia Saturday. Yeah, this it, this is the best pick of the, on the board, Zach. That, this is a great <laughs> pick. I should have picked it. Um, this is like take the under yes. two. Like what? But unless what? Georgia scores it all by themselves, take the under. Yeah, I, because I, I, Auburn's not going to put one in the end zone. I mean, this is – it's 14. I mean, this is almost kind of like what we were saying about the LSU Ole Miss game. Like, does Vegas know something we don't? Is, like, half Correct. of Georgia's team in prison and, like, no one knows it? Like, Well, I can't wait for, like, a which, critical – Which isn't too crazy to say. But. Like, like third and seven on Georgia's 40, and Hugh Freeze dials up the wide receiver toss pass. I can't wait. I, knew, I yeah. can't <laughs> wait. I knew you don't say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it, it's going to be like a drug for him over there. He is going to be just – and it'll be so obvious when he does it too, when he calls yeah. it. Oh, I can't wait. What time is that game? Oh, it's two thirty. Two thirty, oh, huh? yeah, baby. That's the, that's the lead in to the Ole Miss game. Oh, it'll be. You hate to see it, right? You really do. All right, Austin. All right, I'm trying to fight this regression that I know is coming off by just keeping it simple here. So, uh, let's see. San Diego State gives up uh, two – wait, hold on. i got to get the number. So, in their last three, San Diego State's given up 228 yards on the ground. This week, they play Air Force, who is averaging 330 on the ground per game. This is not your big brother San Diego State team. Mm. They lost Rocky Long, um, who's now at Syracuse, their defensive coordinator. They can't stop anybody on that side of the ball, and they particularly struggle in the run game. That doesn't bode well when you're playing a service academy who can run and run. Effect. And Air Force, by the way, this year is far and away the best service academy. I'm laying the 10 and a half at home with Air Force. All they're doing is covering this year and covering by margin. You know, I think they've been the favorite like by six, by eight, and they're beating people by 14 and 20. They're blowing the doors off, folks. I don't think San Diego State can hang at all. Um, they got to go two altitude, seven o'clock kick um, in Colorado. I just trust the Air Force to get it done here. Two touchdowns feels easy. I think it could be more like 17 or 20. Uh, let's lay the 10 and a half with the Falcons. Option football and winning. It's all Troy Calhoun knows. That's all he does. That and, and, and get listed as a candidate for the Ole Miss football job whenever it opens every <laughs> four years. Uh, trivia time real quick. Do you know who the quarterback is for San Diego State? Yes, I do. He is. It's Maiden. Tate Martell. Is it Maiden or Maiden? Tate Maiden? Martell. Tate Martell <laughs> might be in prison. It's uh, former it's... Mississippi State safety. Right. Jalen. Oh, Jalen uh, Maiden. Thompson. Jalen Maiden. Maiden. <laughs> he threw two passes during his time at Mississippi State and then transferred out west. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody thought he was like the next Dak. Like he was a big dual threat. You know, six mm-hmm. three, two twenty. Uh, lefty. Um, he played a decent game against Boise, but like you said, they couldn't stop Boise in that game. Which, by no, the way, they, like, Boise's like, got a good running back. Just you used to be able to hang your hat on San Diego State, like stopping the run and having a good running back. They did that. That was like their program's identity for 50 years. It's just not anymore. They don't have an NFL back. They don't have an NFL quarterback. And their defense has fallen off suddenly. Yeah, that is a... Uh... It is a sneaky like, um, which by the way, their their stadium name makes me crack up. Snapdragon Stadium. Snapdragon, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean they've got 
I mean, obviously Marshall Falk Marshall started Falk, it. Yep. And then who was the guy that they had a couple years ago? Yeah, what's his name? Uh, I'm looking it up. Oh, my God. Because they were talking about him on that telecast. I watched that game, the the Boise game. Um, Is it Pumphrey? Donnell Pumphrey? Maybe. They've had – okay, hold on. Here's the all-time – They've had multiple dudes back there. Oh, they've been really good at running back for a long time. What's that guy's name? Rashad Penny played there. Rashad Penny. Yeah. Ronnie yeah. Ronnie Hillman. Ronnie Hillman. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. They they put some dudes out. Yeah, DJ Pumphrey. That was a guy in 2017. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, who was the guy that you just said? Rashad Penny. That was the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. I, I love Air Force. They, uh, yeah, since I mean Calhoun's been there for like fifteen years, and all they do is win and uh, handle business. I feel like they they got a pretty good against the spread record as well. Oh yeah, um, and as y'all know, once an option offense gets rolling, it just is. I mean, it's like a bowling ball downhill. Like you just can't mm-hmm. stop it. Man, I've got four here on my board left, and I can't decide. Which one? It's my go. Isn't it? Is it me? Yeah, I was gonna say if if, if you got one, go because I'm I'm fighting over these last four. I'm gonna do something that I probably shouldn't do here, but we're we're gonna roll with it. Um, but they're coming off of an of an emotional win, but I just think their opponent is just too bad, and I hope y'all haven't picked this yet. I'm, I'm we're going back to the Pacific Northwest and I'm going to take the Oregon Ducks <laughs> and I'm going to lay 26 against the Stanford, Stanford Cardinal. Yeah. I mean, that's not the worst pick ever. <laughs> Stanford. You want to talk about a place I, that churned out running backs and now they are just a graveyard over there. You're in a major rebuild. Yeah. It, th- this is not a – this is a very, very much a letdown spot for Oregon. Uh, Stanford wins the overall – or leads the overall matchup. It's not going to matter here. Um, it, This is a game that – it's more about how bad Stanford is than how good uh, Oregon is. It, if you think that, that Auburn is bad at throwing the football – Stanford has thrown for 534 yards this year. Yeah. Mm. And it's a – To put that in perspective, Oregon has a receiver with almost that many receiving yards. <laughs> so it's, I believe it's a it, true you know, And I like Bo Nix. Bo Nix has done well. And, and, and the thing is, is like Colorado, we say what we want about them. They're a lot better than Stanford. I, yeah. I don't know how this line is, oh, it yeah, is unless, unless they're playing on Stanford just playing keep away. Um, so I give think me it's the a spot. Thing. I think it's what you said. It's a flat yeah. spot. That that that's all. It's but a flat I, spot. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe Oregon. Don't they have a big game next week too? No, they got to come back and play. I, I was looking at that too. Okay. They have they have Washington next, but that's in two weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna take them. I'm gonna take them and lay the in Seattle play the too, baby. That's gonna be a hell of a game. They got a three week stretch. They got at Washington, Wazoo, at Utah. We'll find out. Yep. We'll find out how good they are. This podcast also comes to you thanks to Bluff City Advisory Group, Memphis's leading team of finance professionals who can provide advanced assistance with financial planning, pension, and qualified plan support, and business and estate planning strategies as well. Former Ole Miss Rebel and founding partner Ben Still, along with his elite level customer service team, make it their goal to help you meet the ongoing demands of your financial needs. Learn about this and more at bluffcityadvisory.com. The car buying process can be a lot. I know, I've been there. You just want to get in and out with a new car and the best deal. Simple. Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford keeps it simple. They're going to take care of you, get you in and out with your new vehicle with a great deal. Their inventory right now is priced to sell. And what separates Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford from any and all competitors is they aim to address each of your needs with the utmost respect, care, and attention to detail. 
Contact them today at 662-234-8000. That's 662-234-8000. Stop by and see them in person at 2201 East University Avenue in Oxford. That's Alan Samuels Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Oxford to find your next perfect car, truck, or Jeep. Alan Samuels, let's be friends. No, dude, I like that pick because Stanford is just, they're just walking dead. I think the uh, Ashton Daniels for Stanford, the quarterback, he's a, I believe he's a true sophomore. He's going to be running for his life in this game. I, I think Oregon might be too good to have a letdown spot and not cover that. Well, Stanford is tar- is quickly turning into Vanderbilt. I mean, yep. 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 That, that, you know, they lost to Sacramento State. I it's just so not. it's so hard for schools like that in the portal era. You can't you can't get guys out of the portal. They can't qualify to go to Stanford. You know what I mean? Like you're you're yeah. only going to lose players in the portal era if you're well, Stanford and Northwestern and hell even Vandy. I was thinking about that. Like in the portal era, is everybody just taking general studies? They probably were anyway, or or PE yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Stanford just like, yeah, the classes just transfer. Yeah, yeah. 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 At Stanford, you got to take like computer science or like you know. Mars agriculture actually have so developed skills. Yeah. Well, to, I remember to work and even pre to go portal professional era. in something other than sports. Yeah, yeah. Even pre portal era, they had trouble getting grad transfers in because the admission rate for their grad programs is so tiny, so small that they couldn't let just because the coach needed a linebacker, like the, tough shit. Like we can't let you in our grad school because there are you know five million people that want in our grad school. So. Um, it was that way pre portal era. Now it's only gotten worse for them. Yeah, it, yeah. Because depending on and with portal and like grad transfers, the timing. Um, because I, I have a pretty good source on this. Uh, with higher education <laughs> requirements, um, yeah. it's not that easy to just be like, "Oh, they play football, you can get them in." Yeah, right. Like, right. like Stanford, uh, Duke. Vandy, Northwestern, um, Northwestern, Michigan, Notre yeah. Dame, those schools have to deal with that because like, it's one thing to let guys in. I believe it's like you can bring them in in the spring because it won't affect rankings mm, okay. of, of, you know, transcript or grades or whatever. Um, but like, it's just increasingly hard for those schools, not only because their admit rate is so low, but the timing of it with, those types of dudes like you just can't do it like you can't just go to the ad or the president or the provost or the chancellor or whatever and just be like hey we we really need this guy from auburn he's mm-hmm. only going to be here for four yeah. months they're like nope tough shit so, that's not how it works yeah yeah um so yeah i mean that that's a good call there ben about how they're just turning into vandy where it's just they're just not good i mean they're they're pretty much a full-on like baseball school now I do like their coach. They though. are. He's got. I mean, yeah, me too. I, he's not going to have any talent to work with. But he came from Sacramento State, and they were really good at the FCS level. And uh, you know, I think he's going to do the do the best job that they're going to. I don't think they can do any better. Let's put it that way, because they're just going to be so devoid of talent. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, it may be the end of his career because I, I don't know who's going to take a flyer on him after he just loses there for three or four yeah. years. Maybe an OC job. That's true. All right. Uh, all right. I'm going to see job in the SEC West. Mm-hmm. Any good caution? <laughs> um, I know a guy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and crank this one up just to have some skin in the game early in the day. Um, 11 a.m. ESPNU in Harrisonburg, Virginia. I'm taking the Dukes of James Madison. To got cover. To. What a pick. I wanted to do it again. Be three weeks in a row. You can give me two and you can give me two and a half. They're a machine. Woo-hoo. They're a cover machine. Take the Dukes. Light it up, baby. JMU is damn near automatic right now. And I'm mm-hmm. probably just jinx myself, but I don't think I am. They no, you're not. beat Virginia. They beat a good Troy team on the road in Mobile, and then they put it on Utah State. South Alabama coming into town. It's a decent trek for them to get over there to Harrisonburg. USA is not great. They're two and two. 
Um, quarterbacks turned it over quite a bit. I don't think they run the ball as well as they did a year ago. And I just think that JMU's better. Kind Jordan, McCl- Jordan McLeod. Yeah, I thought USA was going to be kind of spunky this year. Um, you know, I thought that they would. Um, them losing to Central Michigan was shocking to me because they whipped Oklahoma State at T Boone Pickens. Yeah. And I was kind of like, okay, here we go. Like, I'm going to keep them, you know, in the hopper for picks. And, they got, and then they got wrecked by Tulane, too. Now, Tulane was a good team, but I mean, they, yeah, yeah. they beat the brakes off of South Alabama. I didn't watch a single second of the Central Michigan South Alabama game, but just looking at the box score, it looks kind of fraudulent for Central Michigan. So maybe South Al just something fluky happened there, but I still love the pick. I mean, JMU at home. Again, we we talked, we've said this a couple times, because they can't play in the conference championship, but because they can't play in a ball game, I think they take that shit personally, man. I think they yeah. treat every game like as a statement game. They just yeah. play hard. They're well coached. They've got some dudes. Play really well. Yeah. I once I saw that it got down to two and a half, I was just like, this is like an auto play. Yeah. You got to play on them until they lose. Which they're undefeated right now against the spread, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, they were a dog. They were a dog at Troy and won. Yeah. That um I, I think I think I actually picked them straight up that that game, not to brag. <laughs> I love Kurt Signetti. He's a he's a really really good coach. Um I mean he was I mean that dude was at IUP and then was at Elon and got them into the tournament twice and that's a terrible program and then he jumps into JMU 14 and 2, 7 and 1, 12 and 2 and then they jump up to the Sun Belt and he goes 8 and 3 last year and then just the whole thing with them not being eligible for the postseason is so stupid. Yeah. It but, is. All right. So you two got one pick each left. Let's uh let's fill up this board and pick some more winners. All right. Last one for me. I'm going back and forth on this one. I'm just gonna have to go with my gut here. Um so you're gonna look brilliant or really dumb, but give me the Duke Blue Devils plus five and a half at home against Notre Dame. Uh I think it's an Jeez. obvious, obvious flat spot here for Notre Dame after a gut punch last week against Ohio State, a game in which they probably should have won. They looked like the better team for most of the game, really, up until the final play, arguably. And then, you know, a boneheaded coaching decision or, or coaching error where they had 10 players on the field probably mm. cost them the football game. Uh, they had 10 players on the field, by the way, in back-to-back plays with Ohio State on their goal line. Uh, and back to back games. This yeah, isn't the first time this year this has happened. Yep, yep. So uh Marcus Freeman clearly is still still figuring out this whole head coaching thing. Um <laughs> and I think I think Elko is a far superior coach. And by the way, where was Elko prior to his stint at Texas AM? That is the Notre Dame. Notre Dame fighting Irish. Yeah. So Elko's going to want this. I mean, he wanted it anyway. Notre Dame's ranked. They're Notre Dame. Everybody wants to beat them when they come to your house. I get all that. But if he needed any more motivation, you have to think him coaching there before. And he was on the same staff as Marcus Freeman. So I, I think there's some familiarity there. I know that's a two-way street, but I just think Elko's the better coach overall. Um, I think his time with Freeman um, will probably be be put to good use in this game. I think Duke might have the better quarterback here too. Hartman has played really well. He hasn't had his his game yet where he throws five or six picks, so maybe he's due for that this week. He seemed to do that once a year at Wake Forest. Um, and I also like the fact that Elko has seen Hartman before with uh, with Duke and Wake. So um, it wouldn't shock me for Notre Dame to win. I, 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 I think they are the better team and they have the better roster. But I just think a, a three-point win in a really flat spot here is more likely than a 7, 10, 14-point blowout. Uh, so give me the better coach with the better quarterback at home in a giant game. I mean, b- biggest game in Duke history. I know it's mm-hmm. not saying much. Oh, yeah. but game day. Oh, game yeah. day for the first time. Yeah, so give me the number over the, the, the key number of three and four. Five and a half is kind of in a dead zone, but uh, it gets me across those key numbers. So give me the Blue Devils. I tell you 
Austin, one thing Marcus Freeman does have figured out is sex. He has seven kids. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very old. The guy hits the target. Another page. Yeah. <laughs> and he just now became Catholic. He became Catholic in 2022. So, yeah. Um, so this is going to be not very friendly to our neighbors to the south. <laughs> so, <Do it>. s- <laughs> Southern Miss. <laughs> Oh, oh, those neighbors, those neighbors. Oh, y'all are going state? No, no, yeah. no, no those no, those aren't our neighbors. Those are like the people that <laughs> yeah. jump the fence to get in the neighborhood to get the pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're squatting in the pool house. Um, they uh, so those are the people um, that come to town during carnival season. That's this... <laughs> so, uh, um, all right, Texas State plays in Hattiesburg. Saturday. Hell yes. Okay, so uh, Texas State's all right. I like GJ. What? How do you say his last name? Kenny. Kenny. Ken? Yeah. 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 Kenny. And um, really good. And I also did not put this together. So shame on me. Texas State's quarterback is TJ Finley, mm-hmm. who was at LSU. I love, 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 love quarterbacks who are good enough to play in the SEC. And that don't it doesn't pan out, so they transfer to a uh, G five or directional school, and they light the world up. And, and matter of fact, it's not just when they transfer out of the SEC to that. We're seeing it with um, the uh, what's his name in uh, Oregon. We're seeing Bo it Nicks. with Uyungle. Yeah, yeah. Bo Nix, uh, DJ, um, and at Oregon State, it just happens because the league that we play in, frankly is just so superior to pretty much everyone else other than a, a couple of teams, the big 12, a couple of teams, ACC and the big 10 as a whole, that when these guys leave that they are elite players and that's what's happened. It, it's even more so when you go to, you know, a Sunbelt team, frankly, and, you know, like had John, let's just say, for example, had John Rice Plumley left Ole Miss and gone to Southern, he would have rushed for 2000 yards that next mm. year. Yeah. <laughs> because he would have lit the world on fire at, while he was at Southern Miss. Now, but when you, so when you go to the Sun Belt, it's just a whole different ball game. And TJ Finley seen that the guy is eighty for one twelve eight for on the year, already over a thousand yards, eight touchdowns, one pick. Um, and Southern Miss is not good, guys. They went to Arkansas State last week and lost, and lost. Eight Arkansas State team. That's an unforgivable yeah. loss. Yeah, that that is uh, unforgivable loss. And, Tulane basically skunked them 21 to three in Hattiesburg. And we all know what Florida state did to them. So, I mean, 66, 13, this is a, they're on a three game losing streak. My one hesitation is USM back against the wall. You know, that's, this is a absolute mm. last stand type game. Mm. Is this their possum um, game? And, like possum in the garage. And, and so, <laughs> the problem that USM <laughs> that, that USM is going to have is that is Texas State is good, and yeah. so um, you know we'll see what happens. But I'm going to lay the five and a half with Texas State, and and Ben, I tell you what, play my chances. I can, it riskiest bet of the week for me. Yeah, I'll, I'll lay five. This is the riskiest bet of the week for me. Texas State they played Nevada fairly close. They they lost to UTSA, but that was a different UTSA than than is now. Oh yeah, um, that was with a healthy Frank. Wilson. So correct. So um, Ben, I'm I like say, it so what much. Are they, the Wildcats, Bobcats, Bobcats. Yeah, I liked it so much. I bet it at seven when it opened on Monday, and the numbers moved against me, and so I hit it again. I don't see it. Like I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll pay. I will pay to see the Southern Miss off the Southern Miss offense keep pace with this Texas State offense. Texas State's going to put up a number with four in front of it. They just are. They roll out of bed and put up like 35. Yep. So, uh, good luck. There's, there's no how. Dude. How is this less than 10? There, guys. T.J. Finley would start at quarterback for Alabama. At Auburn, he should, he he should be at Auburn. Mississippi State. He would start a quarterback at Auburn. Do you mean? <laughs> Could you imagine him with you Florida. Freeze? He was well, like, there's like seven or eight SEC teams where he'd start a quarterback, <laughs> and he's playing at Texas. He'd State. start at he'd start at Mizzou. Yep. 
Yeah. Vandy. I, dude. Oh, speaking of quarterbacks, that dude's going to be in the portal. Or at least I think maybe, maybe he values his education on West End. But A.J. Swan ain't bad, and I think he's going to get in the portal and go somewhere and be be good. Man, Vandy is headed the wrong direction. You have to think that but, one of those guys is going to go to Auburn. Like AJ, somebody's going to go. That's yeah, a good call. Yeah, pull, play in the. But I don't. But offense. I don't know if he fits freeze. Swan's kind of probably a, not like an Andrew Andrew Luck type big dude. Would love for him to be at Ole Miss, but we have too many good quarterbacks, right? Like <laughs> too, we too many quarterbacks. quarterbacks. We, I, I would lo- matter of fact, I would love to be able to trade a quarterback for like a Seriously. defensive end. Seriously. And a uh, left tackle uh, pick to be named later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love this pick, Ben. You're telling me you're going to give me Gary Joe and Mark Leftwich against Will Hall? <laughs> and it's only five. How oh, many? The, so... <laughs> <laughs> the Party Street Ted Lasso, baby. I, I mean, <laughs> how many? <laughs> how many people do you think are going to be in MM Roberts Stadium on Saturday? Oh my God! I like, wonder what what do they average? The well, the I was gonna say the capacity is thirty six. Is it really? They have to average like eighteen, and that's being generous. let's see twenty twenty two. I won't. We're gonna look at this twenty twenty two. They they averaged twenty five thousand. Wow, that is not that is not correct. How many does their volleyball they... stadium hold? <laughs> <laughs> That's up from twenty three thousand in twenty twenty one. Okay, they were seven and six last year. They went to a bowl. They won their bowl game last year, but they suck this year. Yeah, dude, you can't you can't 62, lose to Arkansas 000. State. Arkansas State is may, maybe literally the worst team in the country. Yeah, Jones Boogie's not churning out those coaches and waiting for. Lower level no. P five jobs anymore. No, I mean now it's Butch Jones and he's crying on the sideline. Yeah, Tim Tebow. <laughs> um, <laughs> where did? Oh, what was that dude's name? Yeah, there he is. Where did he go? Wait, no way. Remember that badass tight end that. Arkansas State had that was from England that everybody wanted in the portal. I'll take your word for it, but say no. door, <laughs> say do Treor. And where do you end I up? I feel like I remember somebody getting. Was that his name? Yeah, it's like say like S E Y D O U T R A O R U O R E. Do you know where he's at? Mississippi he's State. At, he's at Mississippi State now. Yeah. And I don't think he's played. That dude looked like Ev- like a Terminator Evan Ingram at Arkansas State. I mean, the only way I'm he's going to play y'all, is man. He's a running back at State. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he has this year he has no stats. How in the world does that happen? That's Who crazy. plays tight end for them? Well, they had to literally bring in like three, didn't they? Because Mike Leach didn't roster a tight end. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So in receiving yards, <laughs> Antonio Harmon plays tight end for them. I forgot about that guy. Do y'all remember him? No. From Kosciuszko? Yeah, I do. The big I wide do. receiver. Yep. Yeah, I think I think he just ran like a four eight forty at an Ole Miss camp, and they were like, "No." Nah. Very famous yeah, athletic yeah, yeah. family in Mississippi. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, looks like it looks like a million bucks, but slow. But yeah, he's their tight end. That wow, I cannot believe that. Maybe that dude just could couldn't handle the step up. But yeah, his look up his highlight video from Arkansas State. Like he was going off on people. Um, do we have all our picks? We do. That's it. We licked it. And I don't like the slate. I don't no, like it. I, I, hate I didn't it. like it last week. I mean, I love it for watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was but gonna say. I'll, I'll watch whatever, but 
the markets are getting really I efficient. Know. I mean, at this point in the season, the lines are are tight. Well, I feel pretty just, good about our picks, though. It doesn't make sense that the LSU Ole Miss line is two and a half. It doesn't that none about nothing about that makes sense to me after the past couple of weeks, unless like you said, they're they're giving a lot of or took a lot away from LSU because of that Arkansas game, which mm-hmm. in turn has me concerned about Arkansas now. Yeah, I know, I know. That okay. And, answer me this: Does that tell you that if Ole Miss had either played Bama closer or won? That Ole Miss would have been minus what? Two and uh, a half. Maybe two and a half, yeah. yeah. You think it'd just yeah. be the exact same? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not going to be five points one way or the other. By the way, we, we mentioned State and Bama. I don't know, we're not going to do a deep dive and we need to jump, but I just have to get this stat out there. <laughs> State hasn't scored a touchdown against Bama since 2019. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't scored a passing touchdown against them since 2014. That their, Prescott threw it. Their that last insane. five scoring outputs. Six, nine, zero, seven, zero. It, I almost locked in the under in that game. It's uncanny. Nick Saban think, would be – he'd be perfectly fine winning that game 21-3. to three. I think so. I think so. And look, the state opened it up a little bit last week against South Carolina. I think that was largely a product of South Carolina's defense being, you know, subpar. Obviously, Bama was much, much better, particularly in the secondary. Here's a funny stat, though. State secondary. All right, the last two games, LSU and South Carolina. South Carolina and LSU threw the ball 57 times against state. They completed 49 of those passes. What? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 49 of 57 in two games? Yep. Not great. Georgia's not, great. not necessarily known for their great quarterback play. Yeah. No, I mean against State. So oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Carolina sorry. and yeah. – I, I said Georgia. You know that. Yeah. 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 Which, which, I mean, look, Daniels and Rattler are good quarterbacks. Don't get me wrong. But that's 49 of 57 against air is hard. Like, that, that's – Yeah. But didn't Daniels he, complete, like, his first 20 passes against State? I think so. He, something. he, like – Set records. Yeah. Well, I I was listening to the Andy Staples show today, and they were going through the slate and picking games. And I can't remember the guy that was on with him. I think he was an AP guy, but they brought up State Alabama, and both of them were just like, "Yeah, we know how this one typically goes." And yeah. that was like all they said. Yeah. Because I mean, it, even even with Dan Mullen. Like he he just that that was his kryptonite. He could not do anything against them. Yeah, and, and he, Bud Elliott yeah, from, to be from, able to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, but Bud Elliott from Cover Three said this. I thought well today on their podcast uh, last week for State looked like a hail mary game where the coaching staff was just like, we've got we have got to win this game. You know, we've got a big borrow and still a way to win this game against Carolina. We got to figure out something. It, it was like they threw everything they had at Carolina, and they still lost. So, yeah. I, 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 I'm i curious about what kind of effort we get out of State this week. I know Bama's playing at your house, and typically everybody gets up for that. But it just feels like State left everything they had on the field last week and still lost. Bama may come out and beat them like 35 to nothing. The, the problem when you play – or my thought when you play Alabama is – and, uh, you know, this is like breaking news, good players – you, you have to have good players, but state, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong here, but they don't have the high end talent to be able to exploit a matchup with a team like Alabama, right. like state can take their players and they can beat Auburn or yeah. they can beat Ole Miss. They can beat Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. But when you play Alabama, you better have some first round talent to win. Yeah. Like we just saw that. Yeah, you got to be able to win. first round talent. You got to be able to win a matchup somewhere. You got to be able to win a matchup, whether that's your tight end against a safety, or you know, you got Laquan yeah. Treadwell and, and he beats a corner. You got to be able to win a matchup somewhere. And they, yeah. I don't, I don't see yeah. where they match up anywhere on the field. Or you have to have an elite quarterback. Yeah, like it has to be one of the like you have to. There has to be a guy on your team, Evan Ingram. It was a was a great weapon against Alabama. Yep. And I'm only using Ole Miss players because that's who I know. But, like, 
other than Georgia, you have to, I mean, that's what Tennessee did to him last year. They used the receiver. Mm -hmm. Hyatt yep. was his name. Yep. They, yeah. They, they just, what he catch like five touchdown passes. Yeah. They kept and, running the so, same damn stack and Bama just had no answer for it. Yeah. They couldn't do it. And so, and, and so that's how you beat them. State doesn't have that guy. They do have a great player. I think the, what's his name? Tula Griffin. I think mm -hmm. he's a great player. I love him. I wish we had him on our team. He is good. And, um, I think Maybe we almost, like I think we almost did. Is good. I think we almost yeah. did. Uh, <laughs> and they have some decent <laughs> he, defensive his price players. Tag was too high. Watson. Yeah. Like Watson's good. Yeah. Um, uh, who's their 22? Who's their... I can't think his. Oh, Nathan, Pickering. Yeah, another Nathan. Pickering. Pickering That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Pickering's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I tell you, the dude Which that was we... almost the dude that was almost in an Ole Miss uniform that Ole Miss could probably use right now, who's at South Carolina, is Stone Blanton. A uh, mm. funny, funny story. We talked to my neighbors across the street. Either they have like a, 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 a relative maybe who's dating him or something. I can't remember. We were talking about him out in the street tonight that, you know, how well he was playing and he is doing well. He's a good player. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous to me that we'll take a reach on a guy. And we've done this historically, like some, like, the second best player on a high school team in, in Colquitt County, Georgia, or wherever. And instead of getting like the best linebacker in Mississippi, because we think he's quote slow when that guy, by the time he's a 30, he's like a program guy in his third year, he's all sec. Like, yeah. Why don't we just sign him? You know what I'm saying? I, I'll never understand that. And he's a baseball guy too. You know, Kiffin loves that. Yeah. All right. You know, I, so, so final score for the Rebs game before we sign off. Go, Zach. All right, I'm gonna pull up my prediction. Um, yeah, like I said, this is like the quote. It just doesn't make any damn sense. Game of the week. Um, it doesn't. I again, I circle the wagons for Jackson Dart in the offense. Uh, I think this one's gonna be an instant classic. Um, LSU's offense is good. I just think with the home team being so good in this rivalry in the last decade and Ole Miss is 17 and five at home under Lane Kiffin and nine and four against the SEC in his tenure at Ole Miss. So at home, I think Kiffin's kind of ready to shut some people up. I'm taking Ole Miss 27, LSU 26. My head says LSU 33, Ole Miss 24. My heart says 31, 30 revs of the walk-off field goal. Oh, I like both of y'all's predictions. I'll be more bullish, even though I, I agree with Austin. My head says that this is not going to happen, but we're going to go 36, 27, Ole Miss. Any What's of those would work. What's the 60, total? 67. It, that's high. Dang, I almost nailed it at 36-27, didn't I? Mm -hmm. That's the what is that, 64? Dang, I didn't even know the total. Yeah, 67 does feel high, but man, they're good. They're good on offense. Like Jane Daniels is a good player. I don't think he's an NFL quarterback. He's gonna get a chance though. But yeah, he's, he's just gonna so, make a he's gonna make a roster for sure. He's just so slippery. He just never gets licked. It kind of reminds me of uh, Jalen Hurts a little bit. If he gets to the NFL, he's going to get licked. Yeah. Oh, man. It's Bryce yeah. Young's figuring that out. Broken in half. Jalen Hurts never got hit hard, except for when Marquise Haynes pretty oh, much ended his God. life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought I he was going to get kicked targeting. out for targeting. <laughs> me too. It was almost because like, it. it was just like the perfect form tackle. Oh, dude. And I think Gary... the, the refs just respected it. They were like, no, we're not throwing it out for that. Gary Danielson was having an aneurysm in the booth over the <laughs> lack of a targeting call. And John like, Young oh, Lug scooped it up. There's a flag. <laughs> Somebody blocked in the back. <laughs> Breland God. speaks. You're crazy. <laughs> like, man, Gary Danielson was openly cheering for Alabama. In yeah, every every, every game. time he called an Alabama game. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, Alabama plays at 2.30 every week. It's like but, the Fox broadcast crew every time they call a Colorado game at this point. Yeah. yeah. Go to Sanders. That game <laughs> that game was uh 
That game was when Breland Speaks was in his Halloween villain era when he wore that huge neck roll. <laughs> and he had the single digit number. He just number, like yeah, a monster. Yeah. What was he number right. nine? Yeah. BBT. Yeah, for real. He's on a roster now. Good for him. I didn't know that. Who's he playing for? Breland Speaks is now playing for the. Hold on. 49ers? I believe that is correct. Yes, that is correct. Because he tore it up with the uh, Michigan Panthers in the uh, USFL. And then he uh, got picked up by the old Niners. So good for him. All right, week five in the books. We'll see if the fellas can stay hot as we are now 31-17 and overall against the spread, which ain't bad. I ain't mad at it. So we'll be back next week for week six, recapping Ole Miss LSU and looking ahead to Arkansas and the rest of the slate. Gentlemen, as always, it was a pleasure. Appreciate your time. And as always, thank you to Homefield Apparel for making this show possible. HelloFresh, Roback, and the rest of the sponsors as well. And you, the listener, for tuning in with us each and every week and sticking through all of the commentary and uh, all of our junk that we talk about as we uh, break down each week. So until next week, this has been Hit That Line. For Ben, for Austin, and for Nick, wherever he is out there, I'm Zach. We'll talk to you all next week.